Okay, hello, Lane 201. We're back in the minivan for another set of morpho morphology practice exercises. Uh, and for this set, I am once again going to focus mostly on these data sets that we get from different languages that are not English. And the goal here is again to try to figure out how the morphology works in these languages, given this you know small set of data that we get from them. Um, and how they correspond to English. So I'm going to walk you through Swahili, and I think I'll walk you through the Cree example um, here in this particular video, and then we'll do the second set in another video. Uh, so I'm not going to walk through the word formation processes part of this practice exercise. Um, I've already posted the answers to that to the web page, the course web page. So um, you can take a look at those and see if you got the answers right that you um, may have guessed if you work through the exercises on your own. Otherwise, uh, I'll talk about these because they're a little more involved. And also, I think... Um, kind of fun. So the first one has to do with Swahili. Um, we've got a number of forms here. What is this about? 20 forms in Swahili. Swahili is a Bantu language which is spoken primarily natively in East Africa, but it's spoken widely um, around Africa and around the world. Uh, it actually functions as what's called the lingua franca, uh, which means it um, is kind of like an intermediary language uh, for a lot of um, African um, language speakers. So uh, there are a lot of various say tribal languages in Africa, um, which may be Bantu languages such as that they're related to uh, Swahili or they may come from a different language family, what have you. Uh, but what hap happens uh, to be the case is that if, you know, you're living in like um, Kenya or Tanzania and you speak a tribal language, you may also learn Swahili on top of that so that when you uh, meet people who speak a different tribal language, you can kind of correspond or talk to each other or converse in Swahili as opposed to some other language. Uh, and then we all know that uh, there also happens to be a lot of, uh, like there was English colonization in Africa, there was French colonization, a variety of European um, languages have influence in Africa for that reason as well. So it's actually not that uncommon. <laughs> I'll get to the problem in a, sec in a second, but it's actually not that uncommon uh, in Africa for African speakers to be trilingual. So they speak like a tribal, la tribal language, Swahili, and then like um, maybe a European language on top of that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's pretty impressive. And also Swahili's um, a fun language to look at morphologically. Um, it's relatively easy to pick apart in terms of how it puts its morphemes together into larger phrases like he likes or he helped him, so on and so forth. So it makes a good example language to start off with for this sort of... Um, problem set, but uh, I will add that it's a little more complicated than, say, uh, Esperanto. Uh, it's not like it's designed to be as easy as possible, but it's a natural language, um, which is cool, uh, because now we're dealing with reality. So what does the reality look like in this case? Um, for this set, I've broken down the, prone, or the morphemes that you need to um, figure out based on um, three different types. So we have pronouns, we have tenses for the verbs, and then we have different verbs. Uh, so I don't Normally when I talk about this in class, I kind of try to make it explicit what I mean by tenses in case that is not entirely clear. But say um, this just uh, describes, it's a feature of verbs which tells you what time they're taking place in uh, basically. So if it's a verb taking place in the present, uh, like he likes, that's a present tense verb. If it's the future, it would be he will like sometime later than now. Past, he like he liked. And this one is the past participle. Um, I guess I can make that a little more explicit like that, but then it ruins my tabulation. Uh, but the past participle is a different form of the past tense of the verb, like he has liked, which in English indicates that it's an action that has taken place in the past and has been completed in the past. So in the old days, he has liked going to gym class, but now it's different. Um, so anyways, these are the different tenses, and I've got them all lined up in the first four examples, so you can kind of work through what happens to the verbs or these forms to try to tie those together with the different um, translations in English. So the first one is anapenda, he likes, the second one is atapenda or atapenda, alipenda, and then amependa. The only thing that's changing in each one of these is the second syllable in the verb. So it's na when it's in present tense like that. Uh, it's ta when it's in the future tense, like that. And it's li in the past tense. And the past participle, we'll make that misaligned just because, is me, like that. So past part participle. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's pretty easy just to start off with, kind of get our bearings, and now we can work our way up from there. Uh, 
Again, the idea is just look at what changes between, say, two different forms, like anapenda he likes, atapenda he will like. We can see the tense changing here in English, and we can see the, um, this little form here changing, the second syllable form changing in Swahili as well. Now, I guess I'll say as well, just looking at these first two forms, if I, that's the, all the data I had, then I would just think, well, the only thing that's changing um, is this N and this T in the two forms. So I wouldn't even consider ah as part of the um, tense there. Uh, but when we look at more forms like li, ali penda, ali penda, uh, then um, we can see that it's actually that whole syllable that changes to make the different um, tense for those first two verbs. So we got to include this part in it um, in this analysis. Okay, uh, hopefully that's clear, but just in case it isn't, I'll try to be as explicit as possible. What's going on in some of these others? So we've got um, ali penda, he liked. He liked me is Alini Penda. So that gives us a clue that the new part of that, the me part, maybe I can highlight it like this, is the me part. And then it changes to ku for you. So we've got that. Um, he liked him is just this M right there. Uh, so that's not a whole syllable, it's just one individual consonant, a nasal consonant. Um, I'll more to say about those when we talk about phonology later on. Uh, that Ali Tupenda is the only, the two is a new bit here for I, he liked us. So let's say that's two is us. And then he liked them as Ali Wapenda. So that's going to be our them. Um, okay, so we've got a lot of these pronouns. The two that we're missing here are the, are the he and the I. So <clears throat> what's going on here? Um, Maybe we can, to try to figure out what indicates he and I, we can find a couple of forms that differ in terms of um, their subject. So uh, we can't get that a perfect match for those two, I think, but we can figure it out on the basis of what we know already. So I've got he liked you is Ali Kupenda, uh, and then I like you is Nina Kupenda. Um, so we know that uh, the ku part is you, we know that the na part is the present tense. In this case, we've got the past tense, the li. Um, the penda is staying the same, or the penda is staying the same. I don't have a very good Swahili accent. It should be penda. Penda is the same um, in both. So that is probably going to be the verb like. It's in so many of these. That's a reasonable guess to make. The part that's changing is the ni at the start for I like you, and then the ah at the start for he likes you, or he liked you. Um, so let's make a guess that that is um, the subject pronoun in both of those cases. It's not an unreasonable guess here, by the way, because if we look at the pronoun for me, it's ni. Um, those are first person pronouns in both cases. Uh, we change their form in English, but not every language is gonna do that. But, so there's a connection there between I and me, right? Uh, that helps kind of justify uh, what we're guessing here. Um, yeah, all the forms that begin with uh, subject I pronoun um, start with ni in these um, Swahili examples. That also kind of justifies that analysis as well. And on the basis of that, I think we know all we need to know to kind of decipher what the rest of the verbs are. <clears throat> okay, so um, he saw him. This is the he. This is the past tense. Li. This is the him part of it. Remember, it just appeared as like Alim Penda over here. So Ona is C. And we can kind of decipher the rest of them in the same way that Alim is the he, past tense him part of it. And Saidia is help. Hit is going to be Piga right here. And Carry is going to be Chukua, so on and so forth. Uh, kill is going to be Ua just by itself. Look is Tazama. This one's a little bit different from the forms right above it, but remember, this is he, present, me, looks. And as we go through these, we can figure this out morphologically. Um, it's eventually it all kind of comes clear, uh, just which part matches up with which part in English. Um, but the trick is to recognize, or you don't have to recognize this, but 
it's nice to be able to recognize that the order of the morphemes is not going to be the same in Swahili either. Not only are the you know particular morphemes and words and sounds they use in the language going to be different from going to be different from English, but also the order in which they put them in order to express the thought is going to be different as well. So uh, like he looks at me, you're going to say he me looks basically subject object verb. Um, Okay, so with that in mind, we need to translate the following English sentences into Swahili. How do we do that? He has hit me. So we're going to start with ah for the he as a subject. Um, and we need to put that in the right tense. So that's got to be the past participle may, like up here. Um, and then we need to put the me part of that, me, in the preverbal slot. Uh, and then we need to get the um, final verb. So piga, amene piga, is he has hit me. He helps us, that's in the present tense, so we've got ana, and then we need to figure out what the word for us is, because that comes before the verb, so that's two, and then helps is saidia, ana tu saidia. And I will look at you, we haven't dealt with a whole lot of future tense verbs, but that one's going to be ata, and then you is ku, and then look at is tazama. So on ataku Kutazama. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to double check uh, my own pre-written answers for these to make sure I didn't say anything incorrect here. But otherwise, that's all I'm going to say about Swahili. And I just realized that I have um, limited space on my computer. So I'm actually going to pause here before I do the Cree, before I run out of space for this whole video. But that uh, should walk you through this entire example, hopefully without any mistakes. Okay, uh, I thought that something was a little bit off about this last answer, and there was. The subject is not he, uh, for which we have the ah morpheme, but instead it's I. So, whoops. Uh, it's nitaku tazama, is I will look at you. He will look at you as ataku tazama. All right, uh, problem solved. Uh, I'm not going to say anything further about this, and I'll probably actually edit this maybe a little bit so you don't have to see my goof. But that's what happens in live TV, right? Okay, um, see you guys for the Cree question in a second.